Book twenty one of the Iliad by Homer. Translated by Alexander Pope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book twenty one. Argument. The battle in the river Scamander. The Trojans fly before Achilles, some towards the town, others to the river Scamander. He falls upon the latter with great slaughter, takes twelve captives alive to sacrifice to the shade of Patroclus, and kills Lycaon and Astropius. Scamander attacks him with all his waves. Neptune and Pallas assist the hero. Samos joins Scamander. At length Vulcan, by the instigation of Juno, almost dries up the river. This combat ended, the other gods engage each other. Meanwhile Achilles continues the slaughter, drives the rest into Troy. Agenor only makes a stand and is conveyed away in a cloud by Apollo, who, to delude Achilles, takes upon him Agenor's shape, and while he pursues him in that disguise, gives the Trojans an opportunity of retiring into their city. The same day continues. The scene is on the banks and in the stream of Scamander. And now to Xanthus' gliding stream they drove, Xanthus, immortal progeny of Jove. The river here divides the flying train, part to the town fly diverse o'er the plain where late their troops triumphant bore the fight now chased and trembling in ignoble flight these with a gathered mist saturnia shrouds and rolls behind the rout a heap of clouds part plunge into the stream old xanthus roars the flashing billows beat the whitened shores with cries promiscuous all the banks resound and here and there in eddies whirling round the flouncing steeds and shrieking warriors drowned as the scorched locusts from their fields retire while fast behind them runs the blaze of fire driven from the land before the smoky cloud the clustering legions rush into the flood so plunged in xanthus by achilles force roars the resounding surge with men and horse his bloody lance the hero casts aside which spreading tamarisks on the margin hide then like a god the rapid billows braves armed with his sword high brandished o'er the waves now down he plunges now he whirls it round deep groaned the waters with the dying sound repeated wounds the reddening river dyed and the warm purple circled on the tide swift through the foamy flood the trojans fly and close in rocks or winding caverns lie so the huge dolphin tempesting the main in shoals before him fly the scaly train confusedly heaped they seek their inmost caves or pant and heave beneath the floating waves now tired with slaughter from the trojan band twelve chosen youths he drags alive to land with their rich belts their captive arms restrains late their proud ornaments but now their chains these his attendants to the ships conveyed sad victims destined to patroclus shade then as once more he plunged amid the flood the young Lycaon on his passage stood, the son of Priam, whom the hero's hand but late made captive in his father's land, as from a sycamore his sounding steel lopped the green arms to spoke a chariot wheel. To Lemnus' isle he sold the royal slave, where Jason's son the price demanded gave. But kind Etion, touching on the shore, the ransomed prince to fair Arisbe bore. Ten days were past since in his father's reign he felt the sweets of liberty again the next that god whom men in vain withstand gives the same youth to the same conquering hand now never to return and doomed to go a sadder journey to the shades below his well-known face when great achilles eyed the helm and visor he had cast aside with wild affright and dropped upon the field his useless lance and unavailing shield as trembling panting from the stream he fled and knocked his faltering knees the hero said ye mighty gods what wonders strike my view is it in vain our conquering arms subdue sure i shall see yon heaps of trojans killed rise from the shades and brave me on the field as now the captive whom so late i bound and sold to lemnos stalks on trojan ground not him the sea's unmeasured deeps detain that bar such numbers from their native plain lo he returns try then my flying spear Try if the grave can hold the wanderer. If earth, at length, this active prince can seize, Earth, whose strong grasp has held down Hercules. Thus while he spoke, 
the trojan pale with fears approached and sought his knees with suppliant tears loath as he was to yield his youthful breath and his soul shivering at the approach of death achilles raised the spear prepared to wound he kissed his feet extended on the ground and while above the spear suspended stood longing to dip its thirsty point in blood one hand embraced them close one stopped the dart while thus these melting words attempt his heart thy well-known captive great achilles see once more lycaon trembles at thy knee some pity to a suppliant's name afford who shared the gifts of ceres at thy board whom late thy conquering arm to lemnos bore far from his father friends and native shore a hundred oxen were his price that day now sums immense thy mercy shall repay scarce respited from woes i yet appear and scarce twelve morning suns have seen me here lo jove again submits me to thy hands again her victim cruel fate demands i sprang from priam and laothoe fair old alta's daughter and lelegesia's heir who held in pedius his famed abode and ruled the fields where silver satnius flowed two sons alas unhappy sons she bore for ah one spear shall drink each brother's gore and i succeed to slaughtered polydore how from that arm of terror shall i fly some demon urges tis my doom to die if ever yet soft pity touched thy mind ah think not me too much of hector's kind not the same mother gave thy suppliant breath with his who wrought thy loved patroclus death these words attended with a shower of tears the youth addressed to unrelenting ears talk not of life or ransom he replies patroclus dead whoever meets me dies in vain a single trojan sues for grace but least the sons of priam's hateful race die then my friend what boots it to deplore the great the good patroclus is no more he far thy better was foredoomed to die and thou dost thou bewail mortality seest thou not me whom nature's gifts adorn sprung from a hero from a goddess born the day shall come which nothing can avert when by the spear the arrow or the dart by night or day by force or by design impending death and certain fate are mine die then he said and as the word he spoke the fainting stripling sank before the stroke his hand forgot its grasp and left the spear while all his trembling frame confessed his fear sudden achilles his broad sword displayed and buried in his neck the reeking blade prone fell the youth and panting on the land the gushing purple dyed the thirsty sand the victor to the stream the carcass gave and thus insults him floating on the wave lie there lycaon let the fish surround thy bloated corpse and suck thy gory wound there no sad mother shall thy funerals weep but swift scamander roll thee to the deep whose every wave some watery monster brings to feast unpunished on the fat of kings so perish troy and all the trojan line such ruin theirs and such compassion mine what boots ye now scamander's worshipped stream his earthly honours and immortal name in vain your immolated bulls are slain your living coursers glut his gulfs in vain thus he rewards you with this bitter fate thus till the grecian vengeance is complete thus is atoned patroclus honoured shade and the short absence of achilles paid these boastful words provoked the raging god with fury swells the violated flood what means divine may yet the power employ to check achilles and to rescue troy meanwhile the hero springs in arms to dare the great asteropeus to mortal war the son of pelagon whose lofty line flows from the source of axius stream divine fair perabeus love the god had crowned with all his refluent waters circled round on him achilles rushed he fearless stood and shook two spears advancing from the flood the flood impelled him on polites head to avenge his waters choked with heaps of dead near as they drew achilles thus began what art thou boldest of the race of man who or from whence unhappy is the sire whose son encounters our resistless ire o son of peleus what avails to trace replied the warrior our illustrious race from rich peonia's valleys i command armed with protended spears my native band 
now shines the tenth bright morning since i came in aid of ilion to the fields of fame axius who swells with all the neighbouring rills and wide around the floated region fills begot my sire whose spear much glory won now lift thy arm and try that hero's son threatening he said the hostile chiefs advance at once asteropeus discharged each lance for both his dexterous hands the lance could wield one struck but pierced not the vulcanian shield one raised achilles hand the spouting blood spun forth in earth the fastened weapon stood like lightning next the pelian javelin flies its erring fury hissed along the skies deep in the swelling bank was driven the spear even to the middle earth and quivered there then from his side the sword polites drew and on his foe with double fury flew the foe thrice tugged and shook the rooted wood repulsive of his might the weapon stood the fourth he tries to break the spear in vain bent as he stands he tumbles to the plain his belly opened with a ghastly wound the reeking entrails pour upon the ground beneath the hero's feet he panting lies and his eye darkens and his spirit flies while the proud victor thus triumphing said his radiant armour tearing from the dead so ends thy glory such the fate they prove who strive presumptuous with the sons of jove sprung from a river didst thou boast thy line but great saturnius is the source of mine how durst thou vaunt thy watery progeny of peleus aeacus and jove am i the race of these superior far to those as he that thunders to the stream that flows what rivers can scamander might have shown but jove he dreads nor wars against his son even achilosus might contend in vain and all the roaring billows of the main the eternal ocean from whose fountains flow the seas the rivers and the springs below the thundering voice of jove abhors to hear and in his deep abysses shakes with fear he said then from the bank his javelin tore and left the breathless warrior in his gore the floating tides the bloody carcass lave and beat against it wave succeeding wave till rolled between the banks it lies the food of curling eels and fishes of the flood all scattered round the stream their mightiest slain the amazed peonian scour along the plain he vents his fury on the flying crew thracius astipolis and menetius slew mydon thersilicus with aeneas fell and numbers more his lance had plunged to hell but from the bottom of his gulfs profound scamander spoke the shores returned the sound o first of mortals for the gods are thine in valour matchless and in force divine if jove have given thee every trojan head tis not on me thy rage should heap the dead see my choked streams no more their course can keep nor roll their wonted tribute to the deep turn then impetuous from our injured flood content thy slaughters could amaze a god in human form confessed before his eyes the river thus and thus the chief replies o sacred stream thy word we shall obey but not till troy the destined vengeance pay not till within her towers the perjured train shall pant and tremble at our arms again not till proud hector guardian of her wall or stain this lance or see achilles fall he said and drove with fury on the foe then to the godhead of the silver bow the yellow flood began o son of jove was not the mandate of the sire above full and express that phoebus should employ his sacred arrows in defence of troy and make her conquer till hyperion's fall in awful darkness hide the face of all he spoke in vain the chief without dismay ploughs through the boiling surge his desperate way then rising in his rage above the shores from all his deep the bellowing river roars huge heaps of slain disgorges on the coast and round the banks the ghastly dead are tossed while all before the billows ranged on high a watery bulwark screen the bands who fly now bursting on his head with thundering sound the falling deluge whelms the hero round his loaded shield bends to the rushing tide his feet upborne scarce the strong flood divide slittering and staggering on the border stood a spreading elm that overhung the flood he seized a bending bough his steps to stay the plant uprooted to his weight gave way heaving the bank and undermining all 
loud flash the waters to the rushing fall of the thick foliage the large trunk displayed bridged the rough flood across the hero stayed on this his weight and raised upon his hand leaped from the channel and regained the land then blackened the wild waves the murmur rose the god pursues a huger billow throws and bursts the bank ambitious to destroy the man whose fury is the fate of troy he like the warlike eagle speeds his pace swiftest and strongest of the aerial race far as a spear can fly achilles springs at every bound his clanging armour rings now here now there he turns on every side and winds his course before the following tide the waves flow after wheresoe'er he wheels and gather fast and murmur at his heels so when a peasant to his garden brings soft rills of water from the bubbling springs and calls the floods from high to bless his bowers and feed with pregnant streams the plants and flowers soon as he clears whate'er their passage stayed and marks the future current with his spade swift o'er the rolling pebbles down the hills louder and louder purl the falling rills before him scattering they prevent his pains and shine in mazy wanderings o'er the plains still flies achilles but before his eyes still swift scamander rolls where'er he flies not all his speed escapes the rapid floods the first of men but not a match for gods oft as he turned the torrent to oppose and bravely try if all the powers were foes so oft the surge in watery mountains spread beats on his back or bursts upon his head yet dauntless still the adverse flood he braves and still indignant bounds above the waves tired by the tides his knees relax with toil washed from beneath him slides the slimy soil when thus his eyes on heaven's expansion thrown forth bursts the hero with an angry groan is there no god achilles to befriend no power to avert his miserable end prevent o jove this ignominious date and make my future life the sport of fate of all heaven's oracles believed in vain but most of thetis must her son complain by phoebus darts she prophesied my fall in glorious arms before the trojan wall oh had i died in fields of battle warm stretched like a hero by a hero's arm might hector's spear this dauntless bosom rend and my swift soul o'ertake my slaughtered friend ah no achilles meets a shameful fate oh how unworthy of the brave and great like some vile swain whom on a rainy day crossing a ford the torrent sweeps away an unregarded carcass to the sea neptune and pallas haste to his relief and thus in human form addressed the chief the power of ocean first forbear thy fear o son of peleus lo thy gods appear behold from jove descending to thy aid propitious neptune and the blue-eyed maid stay and the furious flood shall cease to rave tis not thy fate to glut his angry wave but thou the counsel heaven suggests attend nor breathe from combat nor thy sword suspend till troy receive her flying sons till all her routed squadrons pant behind their wall hector alone shall stand his fatal chance and hector's blood shall smoke upon thy lance thine is the glory doomed thus spake the gods then swift ascended to the bright abodes stung with new ardour thus by heaven impelled he springs impetuous and invades the field o'er all the expanded plain the water spread heaved on the bounding billows danced the dead floating mid scattered arms while casks of gold and turned-up bucklers glittered as they rolled high o'er the surging tide by leaps and bounds he wades and mounts the parted wave resounds not a whole river stops the hero's course while pallas fills him with immortal force with equal rage indignant xanthus roars and lifts his billows and o'erwhelms his shores then thus to samois haste my brother flood and check this mortal that controls a god our bravest heroes else shall quit the fight and aelian tumble from her towery height call then thy subject streams and bid them roar from all thy fountains swell thy watery store with broken rocks and with a load of dead charge the black surge and pour it on his head mark how resistless through the floods he goes and boldly bids the warring gods be foes but nor that force nor form divine to sight shall aught avail him if our rage unite 
whelmed under our dark gulfs those arms shall lie that blaze so dreadful in each trojan eye and deep beneath a sandy mountain hurled immersed remain this terror of the world such ponderous ruin shall confound the place no greek shall e'er his perished relics grace no hand his bones shall gather or inhume these his cold rites and this his watery tomb he said and on the chief descends amain increased with gore and swelling with the slain then murmuring from his beds he boils he raves and a foam whitens on the purple waves at every step before achilles stood the crimson surge and deluged him with blood fear touched the queen of heaven she saw dismayed she called aloud and summoned vulcan's aid rise to the war the insulting flood requires thy wasteful arm assemble all thy fires while to their aid by our command enjoined rush the swift eastern and the western wind these from old ocean at my word shall blow pour the red torrent on the watery foe horses and arms to one bright ruin turn and hissing rivers to their bottoms burn go mighty in thy rage display thy power drink the whole flood the crackling trees devour scorch all the banks and till our voice reclaim exert the unwearied furies of the flame the power ignipotent her word obeys wide o'er the plain he pours the boundless blaze at once consumes the dead and dries the soil and the shrunk waters in their channel boil as when autumnal boraa sweeps the sky and instant blows the watered gardens dry so looked the field so whitened was the ground while vulcan breathed the fiery blast around swift on the sedgy reeds the ruin preys along the margin winds the running blaze the trees in flaming rows to ashes turn the flowering lotus and the tamarisk burn broad elm and cypress rising in a spire the watery willows hiss before the fire now glow the waves the fishes pant for breath the eels lie twisting in the pangs of death now flounce aloft now dive the scaly fry or gasping turn their bellies to the sky at length the river reared his languid head and thus short panting to the god he said o vulcan o what power resists thy might i faint i sink unequal to the fight i yield let ilion fall if fate decree ah bend no more thy fiery arms on me he ceased wide conflagration blazing round the bubbling waters yield a hissing sound as when the flames beneath the cauldron rise to melt the fat of some rich sacrifice amid the fierce embrace of circling fires the waters foam the heavy smoke aspires so boils the imprisoned flood forbid to flow and choked with vapours feels his bottom glow to juno then imperial queen of air the burning river sends his earnest prayer ah why saturnia must thy son engage me only me with all his wasteful rage on other gods his dreadful arm employ for mightier gods assert the cause of troy submissive i desist if thou command but ah withdraw this all-destroying hand hear then my solemn oath to yield to fate unaided ilion and her destined state till greece shall gird her with destructive flame and in one ruin sink the trojan name his warm entreaty touched saturnia's ear she bade the ignipotent his rage forbear recall the flame nor in a mortal cause infest a god the obedient flame withdraws again the branching streams begin to spread and soft remurmur in their wonted bed while these by juno's will the strife resign the warring gods in fierce contention join rekindling rage each heavenly breast alarms with horrid clangour shock the ethereal arms heaven in loud thunder bids the trumpet sound and wide beneath them groans the rending ground jove as his sport the dreadful scene descries and views contending gods with careless eyes the power of battles lifts his brazen spear and first assaults the radiant queen of war what moved thy madness thus to disunite ethereal minds and mix all heaven in fight what wonder this when in thy frantic mood thou drovest a mortal to insult a god thy impious hand to dides javelin bore and madly bathed it in celestial gore he spoke and smote the long resounding shield which bears jove's thunder on its dreadful field 
the adamantine aegis of her sire that turns the glancing bolt and forked fire then heaved the goddess in her mighty hand a stone the limit of the neighbouring land there fixed from eldest times black craggy vast this at the heavenly homicide she cast thundering he falls a mass of monstrous size and seven broad acres covers as he lies the stunning stroke his stubborn nerves unbound loud o'er the fields his ringing arms resound the scornful dame her conquest views with smiles and glorying thus the prostrate god reviles hast thou not yet insatiate fury known how far minerva's force transcends thy own juno whom thou rebellious darest withstand corrects thy folly thus by pallas hand thus meets thy broken faith with just disgrace and partial aid to troy's perfidious race the goddess spoke and turned her eyes away that beaming round diffused celestial day jove cyprian daughter stooping on the land lent to the wounded god her tender hand slowly he rises scarcely breathes with pain and propped on her fair arm forsakes the plain this the bright empress of the heavens surveyed and scoffing thus to war's victorious maid lo what an aid on mars's side is seen the smiles and loves unconquerable queen mark with what insolence in open view she moves let pallas if she dares pursue minerva smiling heard the pair o'ertook and slightly on her breast the wanton struck she unresisting fell her spirits fled on earth together lay the lovers spread and like these heroes be the fate of all minerva cries who guard the trojan wall to grecian gods such let the phrygian be so dread so fierce as venus is to me then from the lowest stone shall troy be moved thus she and juno with a smile approved meantime to mix in more than mortal fight the god of ocean dares the god of light what sloth has seized us when the fields around ring with conflicting powers and heaven returns the sound shall ignominious we with shame retire no deed performed to our olympian sire come prove thy arm for first the war to wage suits not my greatness or superior age rash as thou art to prop the trojan throne forgetful of my wrongs and of thy own and guard the race of proud laomedon hast thou forgot how at the monarch's prayer we shared the lengthened labours of a year troy walls i raised for such were jove's commands and yon proud bulwarks grew beneath my hands thy task it was to feed the bellowing droves along fair ida's vales and pendant groves but when the circling seasons in their train brought back the grateful day that crowned our pain with menace stern the fraudful king defied our latent godhead and the prize denied mad as he was he threatened servile bands and doomed us exiles far in barbarous lands incensed we heavenward fled with swiftest wing and destined vengeance on the perjured king dost thou for this afford proud aelian grace and not like us infest the faithless race like us their present future sons destroy and from its deep foundations heave their troy apollo thus to combat for mankind ill suits the wisdom of celestial mind for what is man calamitous by birth they owe their life and nourishment to earth like yearly leaves that now with beauty crowned smile on the sun now wither on the ground to their own hands commit the frantic scene nor mix immortals in a cause so mean then turns his face far beaming heavenly fires and from the senior power submiss retires him thus retreating artemis upbraids the quivered huntress of the sylvan shades and is it thus the youthful phoebus flies and yields to ocean's hoary sire the prize how vain that martial pomp and dreadful show of pointed arrows and the silver bow now boast no more in yon celestial bower thy force can match the great earth-shaking power silent he heard the queen of woods upbraid not so saturnia bore the vaunting maid but furious thus what insolence has driven thy pride to face the majesty of heaven what though by jove the female plague designed fierce to the feeble race of womankind the wretched matron feels thy piercing dart thy sex's tyrant with the tiger's heart what though tremendous in the woodland chase thy certain arrows pierce the savage race 
how dares thy rashness on the powers divine employ those arms or match thy force with mine learn hence no more unequal war to wage she said and seized her wrists with eager rage these in her left hand locked her right untied the bow the quiver and its plumy pride about her temples flies the busy bow now here now there she wins her from the blow the scattering arrows rattling from the case drop round and idly mark the dusty place swift from the field the baffled huntress flies and scarce restrains the torrent in her eyes so when the falcon wings her way above to the cleft cavern speeds the gentle dove not fated yet to die there safe retreats yet still her heart against the marble beats to her latona hastes with tender care whom hermes viewing thus declines the war how shall i face the dame who gives delight to him whose thunders blacken heaven with night go matchless goddess triumph in the skies and boast my conquest while i yield the prize he spoke and passed latona stooping low collects the scattered shafts and fallen bow that glittering on the dust lay here and there dishonoured relics of diana's war then swift pursued her to her blest abode where all confused she sought the sovereign god weeping she grasped his knees the ambrosial vest shook with her sighs and panted on her breast the sire superior smiled and bade her show what heavenly hand had caused his daughter's woe abashed she names his own imperial spouse and the pale crescent fades upon her brows thus they above while swiftly gliding down apollo enters ilion's sacred town the guardian god now trembled for her wall and feared the greeks though fate forbade her fall back to olympus from the war's alarms return the shining bands of gods in arms some proud in triumph some with rage on fire and take their thrones around the ethereal sire through blood through death achilles still proceeds or slaughtered heroes and o'er rolling steeds as when avenging flames with fury driven on guilty towns exert the wrath of heaven the pale inhabitants some fall some fly and the red vapours purple all the sky so raged achilles death and dire dismay and toils and terrors filled the dreadful day high on a turret hoary priam stands and marks the waste of his destructive hands views from his arm the trojan's scattered flight and the near hero rising on his sight no stop no check no aid with feeble pace and settled sorrow on his aged face fast as he could he sighing quits the walls and thus descending on the guards he calls you to whose care our city gates belong set wide your portals to the flying throng for lo he comes with unresisted sway he comes and desolation marks his way but when within the walls our troops take breath lock fast the brazen bars and shut out death thus charged the reverend monarch wide were flung the opening folds the sounding hinges rung phoebus rushed forth the flying bands to meet struck slaughter back and covered the retreat on heaps the trojans crowd to gain the gate and gladsome see their last escape from fate thither all parched with thirst a heartless train hoary with dust they beat the hollow plain and gasping panting fainting labour on with heavier strides that lengthen toward the town enraged achilles follows with his spear wild with revenge insatiable of war then had the greeks eternal praise acquired and troy inglorious to her walls retired but he the god who darts ethereal flame shot down to save her and redeem her fame to young agenor force divine he gave and tenor's offspring haughty bold and brave in aid of him beside the beach he sate and wrapped in clouds restrained the hand of fate when now the generous youth achilles spies thick beats his heart the troubled motions rise so ere a storm the waters heave and roll he stops and questions thus his mighty soul what shall i fly this terror of the plain like others fly and be like others slain vain hope to shun him by the self-same road yon line of slaughtered trojans lately trod no with the common heap i scorn to fall what if they passed me to the trojan wall while i decline to yonder path that leads to ida's forests and surrounding shades 
so may i reach concealed the cooling flood from my tired body wash the dirt and blood as soon as night her dusky veil extends return in safety to my trojan friends what if but wherefore all this vain debate stand i to doubt within the reach of fate even now perhaps ere yet i turn the wall the fierce achilles sees me and i fall such is his swiftness tis in vain to fly and such is valour that who stands must die howe'er tis better fighting for the state here and in public view to meet my fate yet sure he too is mortal he may feel like all the sons of earth the force of steel one only soul informs that dreadful frame and jove's sole favour gives him all his fame he said and stood collected in his might and all his beating bosom claimed the fight so from some deep-grown wood a panther starts roused from his thicket by a storm of darts untaught to fear or fly he hears the sounds of shouting hunters and of clamorous hounds though struck though wounded scarce perceives the pain and the barbed javelin stings his breast in vain on their whole war untamed the savage flies and tears his hunter or beneath him dies not less resolved antenor's valiant heir confronts achilles and awaits the war disdainful of retreat high held before his shield a broad circumference he bore then graceful as he stood in act to throw the lifted javelin thus bespoke the foe how proud achilles glories in his fame and hopes this day to sink the trojan name beneath her ruins no that hope is vain a thousand woes a thousand toils remain parents and children our just arms employ and strong and many are the sons of troy great as thou art even thou may stain with gore these phrygian fields and press a foreign shore he said with matchless force the javelin flung smote on his knee the hollow cushes rung beneath the pointed steel but safe from harms he stands impassive in the ethereal arms then fiercely rushing on the daring foe his lifted arm prepares the fatal blow but jealous of his fame apollo shrouds the godlike trojan in a veil of clouds safe from pursuit and shut from mortal view dismissed with fame the favoured youth withdrew meanwhile the god to cover their escape assumes a genius habit voice and shape flies from the furious chief in this disguise the furious chief still follows where he flies now o'er the fields they stretch with lengthened strides now urge the course where swift scamander glides the god now distant scarce a stride before tempts his pursuit and wheels about the shore while all the flying troops their speed employ and pour on heaps into the walls of troy no stop no stay no thought to ask or tell who scaped by flight or who by battle fell twas tumult all and violence of flight and sudden joy confused and mixed affright pale troy against achilles shuts her gate and nations breathe delivered from their fate end of book twenty one